What is up, tacos? I'm so glad that you decided to tune in today for today's Talk About It Friday video. Where we have some questions regarding what's going on right now in the world. We have some this or that. And then some deep thinker questions that have us thinking about some of the situations that uh, we might be encountering in today's world. So, like always, we're going to get right into the questions. So, let's begin. Here we go. So getting right into it today with today's first question, which is with the first day of fall happening this week, are you excited about fall or are you not quite ready for it yet? I would have to say for myself that the summer months and everything of what's going on in the world and all the pandemic things have made this summer feel so long that I welcome the cold, brisk air that moves in with the winds as well as the trees turning color. And yes, I am so ready for fall. I'm ready for fall where it's like required to wear a sweatshirt outside and that football is pretty much the only thing on my mind during the weekends. So I'm very excited that it is fall. It couldn't have come at a better time and it is really bringing my spirits up. It is brightening my days, quite literally with the trees that I have right outside of my window that are finally going to be starting to turn color. It's going to be really fun to watch and I'm very excited about fall. And I, I hope you are too. I hope that fall greets you well. I hope that you're finding this world safe and that everything is going well for you in school, with your family and so on. And that this change in season can bring over a change in your life if you need it as well. Because that is the one thing that is beautiful about where we live is that we get to experience the changing of the seasons and that it might help you with what you're going through right now. So that is how I would answer that question. I'm very ready for fall. So our next question goes right into are you ready for fall or not? And it is what is your favorite fall activity? So for myself, there's a lot of things that you can do in fall. There's a lot of sports that are played in fall, but I'm gonna pick something that kind of revolves around Halloween, but is also done at this time. And that is carving pumpkins. Yes, that is one of my favorite things to do in the fall. There's so many things about carving a pumpkin that is really fun. First, you have to get the pumpkin, which can either be like from a store or you can go somewhere like a pumpkin patch. Then you bring it home. Then you get to gut it out with all of those slimy seeds and such. And then you get to create um, some art, as I like to put it. I, I become an artist when I do my pumpkin pictures. So here are examples of some of the uh, recent pumpkins that I have carved. There were a few years in my late childhood, so when I was more of a high school age, where my family didn't want to carve pumpkins. It would come around to Halloween time, I would be like, all right, I'm gonna get pumpkins to carve, and everybody's like, who wants to carve a pumpkin? I was like, who wants to carve a pumpkin? Like, it's so fun to do, you gotta do a carving of a pumpkin when it comes to Halloween, otherwise it's not Halloween, you have to do it. So what I would do, since my family had four people in, the family, it was my mom, my dad, and my brother and I, I ended up carving everybody's pumpkins because this is how much I liked to carve pumpkins. And ever since I have moved down to Milwaukee, like last year, I wasn't able to carve a pumpkin just because I didn't have the space for it. But the apartment that I live in now has a deck where I can keep the pumpkin. So guess what, friends? I am getting back into the swing of carving pumpkins, and I'm so excited. So that is one of the fall activities I'm really looking forward to. So friends, those are the first two questions that we have for today, and they both are revolving around fall and what time period we're in, and hopefully a season of change for you as we really get into the school year and really get into the fall and feel that end of summer come to a close as it has been going on for what seems like forever. So those are the first two questions that we have. Now we're going to get into our this or that questions for this week. So the first this or that question from you guys is kind of a fun one about uh, TV shows that are on Netflix and such, and it's definitely a different type of viewing. So this is a fun this or that, and it is if you are to binge one of these series right now, which one would you binge? Would you binge Stranger Things? Or would you binge The Office? And I know that a lot of times, we've talked about these shows a lot, both at Tacos with Stranger Things and The Office, and they're both different types of viewing styles, if you know what I mean, where Stranger Things, you could probably finish the entire show in a weekend if you really sit and are dedicated to it, but you probably couldn't do that with The Office. However, it would be like a long-term streaming thing. So which would I rather settle in for as we come into this month, as we come into this time, and as we come into this place, which would I want to do right now? And I would have to say, 
I have never really made it through the entire office, but I have made it through everything with Stranger Things, and I'm picking Stranger Things. This show is so strange and is so good, and I love it, and it gives me throwback vibes to like those days in the fall where I would be riding my bike with all my friends. Like, I don't know, the first, first season has a lot of that going on. I don't wanna have any spoilers if you haven't seen it, but Stranger Things makes me feel very nostalgic, and it makes me want to be a kid taking on some crazy things happening in the world. Whereas The Office is kind of more of this thing that I can have on every now and again. I don't really need to follow it, so I don't really feel the need to binge it necessarily. Like you do with Stranger Things, like I need to watch that in order. Like every time that a new season has come out, I have rewatched it in order. So when season two came out, I took the first weekend that was right before it came out to rewatch it. And then I watched season two and it came out and did the same thing with seasons one and two and three. And now when I watch Stranger Things, I can't just start with like season two or start with season three. I have to watch them all in order. So it becomes this weekend event, but I'm totally okay with that because I love Stranger Things. So I would pick Stranger Things over The Office in this case scenario. I know some of you are going to have a little bit of an issue with that because of your love for The Office, but please be kind to me. I do love The Office yet, but yes, I would say Stranger Things. Sorry. Our second this or that question is a very fun question around the meal of breakfast, which is, would you prefer having a sweet breakfast or a savory breakfast? So this is the instance of rather having like uh, pancakes and syrup or like cinnamon rolls and donuts or eggs, bacon, hash browns, and toast, and all that kind of stuff. So which would you prefer, sweet or savory? And this guy, right here, always will take sweet over savory. I am a donut fanatic. I love cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls were like the prime breakfast for the weekends when I was a kid. And I love pancakes and syrup. And I wasn't necessarily the biggest egg fan growing up. I never really ate eggs. Bacon was all right, but toast, you had to have something on it. And I'm always going to, probably when I'm going out to breakfast, I will always choose to have like pancakes or French toast or something like that. It most likely will be sweet. I know a lot of times it also has to deal with uh, circumstance, whether you're in the mood for something like that. But I would probably say seven out of 10 times, I'm gonna go sweet over savory. So sweet will take the win for the final this or that question on today's Talk About It Friday. So now we're gonna move into some more of our thinking questions and some more um, issues that are revolving around what's going on with you right now. So here we go. This question is a really important question, I think, for this time. And I think it's a really important question around how likely more than half of you are operating on uh, virtual platforms for school. So the question is gonna be about screen time. And the question is, how can I lower my daily screen time? And I think with it being most of a virtual school day, and even if you're at school, you're on, screens this time, it's really hard to get away from the screen. Even right now, we're on a screen. You're viewing this on a screen. So screen time can be really hard to avoid, and it's also a really good thing to get away from the screen when you can, because we're on the screens so much. So I think one way that you can handle this uh, rather quickly and with um, the technology devices that you have is, if you have a smartphone, you can go into your settings and set up uh, screen time timers so that you can only get so much time on certain apps or like all these apps will shut down at this certain time at night so you're not on your screen when you're going to bed and all kinds of other cool features like that. Your smartphones allow you to control how much screen time you have and that way you have the ability to shut down for the rest of the night. Another thing that I would suggest and it's another thing that a lot of us are dealing with is this thing called FOMO or fear of missing out. The one thing that we have with our phones and with our technology and with our social media is that we always feel like we need to be updated on what's going on in the world. We need to see what our friends are doing, to see what our family is posting about, to see what's new in the news and what's going on with our, our pop culture and things like that. And so if we miss out on that, we fear that we're missing it forever and that it's never going to be coming back. But there's a trick to this that I think I've kind of been trying to incorporate into my life right now, and that is... Really, you're not missing out on anything if you're gonna put your phone down for a few hours. It's all still gonna be there when you come back. It might be a little bit to take in your newsfeed, but everything is there when you get back. And so I think that's an important thing to remember if you're going to uh, have an extreme case of FOMO, you can set it down and go for a walk. 
Look at, this is what I did. This morning I went on a walk on a trail that is really close to my apartment. And I got away from all the technology for a, about an hour and a half and I felt really good. And when I came back, everything on my devices was still there for me to view and for me to catch up on. And I didn't have any case of FOMO and I was able to catch up on all my news and I was able to take that time to get away from my screen. So I think that's an important thing that you guys can take for delaying your screen time or just getting rid of some of your screen time in your days is to make sure that you're looking at your phone and seeing if you can set restrictions on your screen time, but also just taking that time to either have a real conversation with your friends, your siblings, or your family, or go out and take a walk, just get outside, because that's what we can do right now, especially when it's so nice with this fall weather moving in. It's so comfortable. So I hope that that helps you with your screen time issues. If you have any other questions that you'd like to talk about with that, you can always bring them up and we can have this conversation. But right now we are going to move on to our final question for today, which kind of ties into screen time and kind of ties into this world that we are trying to figure out. And that is, how have you been keeping up with your friends? Because a lot of what I hear from you guys sometimes is that you really miss being in person and being at tacos and being with your friends. And then you haven't really had that opportunity to do something like that for the entirety of COVID-19. And I'm right there with you. I've been missing getting together with my friends. We would have probably been getting together a lot over the course of the summer, and we really haven't been able to because of COVID-19. So I think one way that you can continue to keep up with your friends is you could get really cool and really ancient and archaic with your friends, and you could start sending each other snail mail letters through the post office. Remember those things? Those, those really cool buildings that they have those boxes that you can put the mail in and then they have someone pick it up. That's right. You can use that to stay connected with people. Having pen pals can do a lot for not only your mental health, but just also just feeling good during the day and that you might have something to look forward to from a friend. So I would encourage you if you're struggling with texting and FaceTiming or just not feeling like you've been with your friends a lot lately, send them a letter and have them send letters back and forth and it would be really cool. And I think that could be a really fun way for you to bring back something that hasn't been happening very much in this world and also staying connected. So if you're struggling with how you are keeping up with your friends, write them a letter. See what happens. It might turn into something really cool for you. But anyway, friends, those are the questions that we have today. I hope you enjoyed talking about the topics of whether or not you're ready for fall and what your favorite activities are or what we have for this or that questions with like a sweet and savory breakfast. And then also just kind of a discussion around FOMO and what you can do with your friends and how we can control our screen time moving forward in this seemingly always virtual world. So I hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you have any other questions that stem from this, feel free to reach out. I'd be glad to have a conversation with you regarding anything, even outside of this video. So please feel free to do that. And I hope you have a great Friday and I hope you have a great weekend. And remember to stay safe, continue to wash your hands all the time. And we will see you back here, right here on this platform, wherever you are seeing this, for some motivation on Monday. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you later.